Welcome to the tour video of Retail Business Manager Excel template. In this video, we're going to take a look at the actual template itself and walk through sheet by sheet so that we can understand what all are included in this template. The purpose of this template is to help manage retail or wholesale business. This is applicable for scenarios where we have a business which purchases products from its suppliers and then sells the products as they are to the customers. The customers can be end users or it could be other businesses. The template includes multiple aspects of the business, including order management, inventory management, finance management, creating invoice and purchase orders, data management around the data involved in the business, and the extensive reporting to understand the business performance. So all of this is included in one application, which is this Excel template. The template is filled with a lot of features and we're not going to go through each line in this list. Instead, we're going to go and take a look at the template in action live. And before we do that, it'll be helpful to understand how the template is set up. The framework used in this template, on the left, you have the different inputs to the template. On the right, you have things that are automatically calculated or output. On the left, we have the products and the prices of those products, the list of partners, which includes the suppliers and the customers of the business. The orders are broken into two. One is the header level information of the order, in such as order date or the partner for the order, etc. And then we have the detail line items of the order, which we call as order details. The final input is the operational expenses involved in the business. And all of these are used by the template with a lot of calculations. And finally, it creates the on-demand invoice generator, and then we can generate purchase orders whenever we need. And then finally, the report sheet is fully automated and it's interactive and flexible. It's extensive and it covers various aspects of the business. Now that we know the framework, let's go and take a look at the template live. Okay, so I have the template open now. In this sheet, you will find a few tips before you get started with the template. And then you will have links to the support information to the website and the specific product support page, which will have the latest demos and tutorials about how to use this template. These links will provide you information on how to use this template and get the most out of the features available in this template. Now, the this sheet has two other pieces of information. The business information is the information about our business, which will be populated on the invoices and purchase orders. So we will enter them here. And for this demonstration, I've actually entered some sample data already, but in your file, when you download, there will not be any, any of this data and you can start entering your own information and then use this template. The second piece of information in this sheet is the product category. So these are the categories by which I am categorizing my set of products in my business. Then we go to the products sheet. Here is where the list of products is entered. I have already entered uh, uh, about 70 or so products here. And these columns are user input, the purple ones, and then the green ones towards the end are calculated. So we should not be editing those calculated columns. So this has the basic information about the product, where product ID will be the unique identifier of the product. And then we have name, description, the inventory when you began, um, using this template and then the reorder point below which you want to be uh, flagging those products which needs to be ordered and then the category of the product whether you want to track inventory whether the product is taxable or not so you enter this basic information and then towards the end we have some calculated columns about inventory uh, on hand inventory to come and go should we be ordering this product or not so all of these green color cells will be automatically calculated for us. Prices, this sheet is where we will enter each product and its effective date and the price, both purchase and sales price. If the price changes for a product, then we would enter a new row for the same product ID, put a new effective date and enter a purchase price and a sales price that is effective. So that is how you can manage even if the prices of products change over time. Partner sheet is where we enter the list of our customers and suppliers together in one list. And we enter their address, email, and contact information. And then 
These blue colored columns that you see are custom columns, which means that you can rename them by typing in a new name here and then use it for your own purpose to store information about a partner. Similarly, we have a column to enter in the product sheet as well. So these are called custom columns. Again, we have some calculated columns towards the end about sales and purchases. Again, we should not be editing any of the calculated columns. They are there for just uh, consumption or viewing, but please do not edit them. And order headers is the sheet where we enter the head header level information of the order. For example, I have entered here nine different orders and each row is a unique order. And so we have nine different orders entered in this template at this point. Each row, each order will have an order date, the order, the date when the order was placed and the expected date, the date when the inventory will be impacted. For a sales order, the expected date is the date when you will send the inventory from your warehouse or location. For purchase orders, this is the date when the inventory will reach your location or inventory. So this is the date when the actual inventory should be impacted. There are five different types of orders, purchase, sale, are pretty straightforward. Purchase, purchasing from your suppliers. Sale, when you sell it to your customers. Quote is similar to a sale. The only difference is that it will not impact your inventory calculations because it's still a quote and not an actual sale. Similarly, estimate is a purchase order, but it won't impact your inventory calculations because it's still an estimate and not a confirmed purchase order. Adjust is to update the inventory if in case, for example, you lose some products due to damage or other reasons, then you want to inform the template, hey, adjust my inventory to reduce the inventory of a specific product by 10 units or something like that, then you can use adjust. So adjust can be used to adjust your inventory above or below plus or minus so that your inventory calculation shown in this template will exactly match the inventory you have in your location. The partner name is the name as partner associated with the order, the due date when the payment is due for that specific order, other charges, discounts on the order, any notes, invoice number, tax rate can be set at the order level. So for each order, you can have a different tax rate. And then the amount that is already been paid on the account on the order will also be entered. When you scroll to the right, you will see two calculations, the total order amount for each order, and then the amount that is still due are calculated. Order details is actually where we enter line items of each order. So for example, the product, the order P1 has five different line items, and you can see there are five different products, different quantities, and then the unit discount are, is applicable in some cases. So this is our input for order P1, which is the purchase order one. Then we have S1, which is the sale order. And then we have these four line items for that order. All these green colored cells are automatically calculated again. And the price of the product and all of these will be automatically pulled. The amount before tax, tax, and amount after tax, these are all calculated by the template itself. Now we go to the invoice sheet. Invoice is actually just a lookup. So it's very important to understand the data that we enter are in these sheets. And then when we come to the invoice, it's automated. So here I have typed in S1, let me type in S2, and we will see that the invoice sheet is updated with the S2 orders information. We can change the logo image. We can see the whether the order can be fulfilled based on inventory available by using this inventory flag and we can see that two of the products cannot be fulfilled and if i look at s1 you'll see that there is enough inventory to fulfill s1 this is how you can check the inventory availability for any sale order before you accept that the purchase order works very similarly it, we just put in the purchase order number and then it'll update the purchase order and then we will see all these information automatically populated. Both purchase order and invoice are very similar in terms of flexibility. So you can change, for example, I do not want the name to appear here. I, don't, I want something else to appear here. You can choose from this drop down and change it. And instead of the billing address, for example, I want the shipping address, then I change it like this and it'll automatically update. So this is how you can easily customize 
And this is applicable for all of these fields. They all have drop downs and you can update them. Even these columns have drop downs where if I want quantity to appear first and not the ID of the product, then I can change that. And if I want to put it back to product ID, I change it. If I don't want a specific field, I don't think this is applicable. I hit delete key, just the name of the field, and then it disappears and we are good to go. If I want it back, I can put it back. So this is how you can customize uh, the entire purchase order and the invoice. The invoice and the purchase order can handle 65 line items in one order, that's the maximum. And uh, if you are doing more than 25 line items in an order, it will have to be two pages. So you'll have to print both pages. Otherwise, by default, it prints one page for 25 line items. Expenses are the operating expenses in your business. You will just enter the date of the expense amount and any notes about what that expense was about. It's pretty straightforward. And then we go to the report sheet where we will see the current status, the inventory status and the financial status of the uh, business. And then we will have customizable report which where we can enter the start and end date and we will see all these metrics automatically calculated, including the profit, the gross profit and the net profit. In the monthly metric section, we will see up to 12 months of data for all these 10 key metrics for the business. And we also see that in a graphical chart and we can change this to show any of the available 10 metrics and the charts will update. Then we can see the top and bottom performing products by top categories, product categories and bottom, top 10 products and the bottom 10. And we can also do it based on sales quantity or sales amount or sales margin. And so we can truly understand which products are contributing to our business. And product performance is where we can choose one specific product and see the inventory data, the sales and purchase activity, sales quantity, trending, all of this for one product at a time. And you can see that this product should be, we should be ordering it because we only have three on hand. Our reorder point is five. So if I go to the next product, we will see that we have 18 on hand and we reorder point is five. So we don't need to order it now. So this is how you can easily get an idea of the specific products details. And then we have finally the partner performance, which is the performance, uh, the top 10 customers and the top 10 suppliers we have. And then we can choose one specific supplier here. And then we will see that this updates sales and the purchase information related to that specific partner. So if I change it to somebody else, let's say, then we can see that this person is a customer and we have a lot of sales amounts and sales quantity for this specific partner. We will also see the aging of the orders and due amounts for this specific partner. So this is a quick overview of the template and let's go back to the presentation and wrap it up. So the limitations with this template are that it supports one warehouse location or location and it does not support any barcode scanning. The data has to be entered by the user. It requires Excel for Windows 2010 or above version, and then for Mac, it's 2011 Excel or above version. We can find more details about the specific highlights of the product in the product page. The support page will have a lot of information on how to use the template with video tutorials and screenshots. And if there are any questions about this template, please leave them in the comments and I'll be very happy to respond. Thank you very much for watching this video.